I mean, the fact that GERD um, is an inflammatory component is really important because it, it's not, it makes it not just about controlling patient symptoms, but it's also a safety issue. You know, we know that GERD now is a, a precursor for esophagitis, which is inflammation of the bottom part of the esophagus, which can lead to precancerous conditions like Barrett's esophagus, where the mucosa actually uh, changes into other types of of cells and even esophageal cancer. So it becomes not just about improving quality of life and making patients feel better, but preventing the development of, of these other conditions. So it's, uh, it's really important that we stay on top of these patients. Yeah, I mean, I think we we're definitely need to be more aggressive in terms of keeping an eye on these patients, making sure not just that their symptoms are better, but if they do start to show these changes of esophagitis or Barrett's esophagus, that we, you know, we keep a close eye on them, we surveil them, we're, we make sure that the therapies we're doing are working so that they're not progressing and, and becoming closer to getting, you know, things like esophageal cancer. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we know that the acid that refluxes up from the esophagus causes the inflammation that we see uh, leading to esophagitis, and this induces changes that can cause uh, things like Barrett's esophagus, and that over time progress, it can progress in a small number of patients to esophageal cancer. So it's really a, it's a transition that generally happens slowly and that we, we can see and hopefully halt the progression by offering these types of treatment.